Hey guys, um, I just got back from uh, watching E3 these past two days. I decided to wait until the second day for, for uh, Nintendo to do their uh, Nintendo Direct conference so that I could get a feel for all three companies, what they're doing, and now I'm going to give you my impressions on E3 this year. Okay, my, my overall impression. Better than last year's but they didn't really show much except for a few things uh from certain people which I'll get into okay sorry about that okay for the first conference that they showed was Microsoft's and you all know how I feel about the Xbox 1 yeah not really too happy about that console but they did reveal some games this year this time around and for the most part they have great presentation good graphics good gameplay at 60 frame per, frames per second that seems to be the thing that they're uh, uh, really talking about is that a lot of these shooters and a lot of these driving games can be played at 60 frames per second great our games are a little faster good I like that better response better everything the games they showed were a little underwhelming, on, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Of the highlights, there was Battlefield 4 and <laughs> the audio issues that they had. Oh, my God. Even the guy up on stage was getting a little pissed off with the problems they were having. <clears throat> but, you know, Battlefield 4 looks good. It's running at 60 FPS, like I said. Uh not really much has changed for Battlefield, to be honest. It looks the same gameplay, the same kind of intense action, same kind of great production value. Nothing really special for me. Oh, and they announced some ma a map pack before the game even comes out. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, they have they have new uh, games like Titanfall, which Looks like an interesting mech shooter game. Uh, not really too keen on it, to be honest. I've never really been a shooter fan, except for a f maybe a few shooters. But Titanfall looks okay. Eh, I can get. I'll give it that. Uh, let's see. They teased a new Halo, to co probably to coincide with the new Halo TV series that they're coming out. And I don't know. We'll have to see. They said it's going to run again at 60 frames per second. Uh, it's gonna feature. It's gonna feature a lot of new things that I can't really remember off the top of my head, to be honest. Let's see. Some of the ori some of the more original IPs, however, were Quantum Break, which had possibly the most disappointing reveal. They didn't really explain anything. Uh, they just kind of put you right in the middle of the action when they were supposed to explain stuff, and I was disappointed in that trailer, to be honest. And let's see. Oh, there was that Rise game. Looked more scripted than a COD mission. See, Call of Duty mission. And heavy emphasis on quick time events in combat. Okay, guys. Let me give you a little piece of advice. Just because God of War got it right doesn't mean that you have to try it with every other game that comes out. I'm sorry, it's just not going to work. God of War got it right because it was actual combat with quick time finishers. That's it. If you're going to input quick time events into the combat itself, it's not going to work. Sorry, I'm not looking forward to that game at all. Let's see, they showed off uh, <clears throat> the new Forza game that looks nice. I'm not really a racing fan, but you know, for those who uh, like that game, good. They showed off some pretty neat uh, footage from it. <clears throat> Alright, now the main topic points were them discussing the Xbox One. They didn't really explain a few... They didn't really explain anything that they didn't cover in the uh, press release conference. Only that they have <clears throat> more a heavier emphasis on cloud-based services and uh, 
they have they have their own like streaming service going on with Twitch TV, similar to what Sony's doing with Gaikai. And the console itself is going to be priced at five hundred dollars, four hundred ninety nine dollars in the U.S. That's a little steep. I'm sorry, that's a little steep for me. I mean, I get it. There's a lot of features on this new Xbox. It has a built-in Kinect. But I can't really justify that price, especially when you guys haven't even begun to fix the always-online issue and the used game DRM restrictions. I'm sorry, but it's a no-sell for me. All right, the uh, next uh, conference that was up was uh, e EA. They showed off a lot of sports games, uh, more Battlefield 4, and <clears throat> Dragon Age 3 Inquisition. They didn't really show any gameplay, but I'm still excited for that game. It looks like it's going to be a lot better than Dragon Age 2, which, even though I kind of like the game, it was really disappointing. But then again, that was all EA was. Just trailers and tech demos for all this new technology to make all of your sports games more realistic. You know, if you want to make more... If you want a realistic sports game, play the actual sport. I'm sorry, I hate seeing those kinds of games. If you like that sport, just play it. Or watch it, I don't care. Playing it might be better than watching it, but... Uh, I don't know, I, I never like sports games. Just, just saying putting that out there. Ubisoft. Yeah, they it was business as usual for Ubisoft. They were showing off all their new games. They got Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, which actually looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, after the disappointing ending to Assassin's Creed 3, I don't know how they're really going to implement the story very well, but you know, I'm I'm not one to judge until I see it myself, so... Yeah. There we go. Oh, and another thing from the Xbox conference. They release, they're going to release Killer Instinct. Okay. Nostalgia? Good. The game was actually pretty good. However... They're going to release the game as free-to-play with only one character to begin with and you have to purchase every other character. B -b -b bullshit Anyways. Uh, back to EA and Ubisoft. Uh, EA also introduced Star Wars Battlefront 3. Yes! Yes! And a new Mirror's Edge title. Oh my god! I love Mirror's Edge, and I'm finally glad they're getting a sequel. And Ubisoft, um, they went with uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist, which looks like a great game. <clears throat> Rayman Legends, every, a lot of people love Rayman. Uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that game looks hilarious. They showed off more Watch Dogs game, which is a game I really, really want. I, I, as soon as it comes out, I'm going to get it. Uh, they showed off Just Dance, whatever. Uh, this new racing game called The Crew. It's not really a racing game, it's more like a driving game. I don't know how that works, but we'll see. And there's going to be a Rabbids interactive TV show. The Rabbids from Rayman. Okay. I mean, I was actually kind of excited for the uh, uh, Halo TV series, but Rabbids? Come on. That's just... That's just stupid. Okay, and now, on to the final conference of the night. Sony. Bravo. Bravo, Sony. You... Ugh. Okay. It started off like a basic uh, Sony conference. They were giving away uh, PS3 information, all the new games coming out for it. Good, good, good. And then they went on to the PlayStation 4, revealed a bunch of new games. Killzone Shadowfall, which I want to get. Uh, Drive Club, which looks cool. Infamous Second Son. Holy crap, that game looks awesome. Uh, that new game, Knack, that looks pretty interesting, actually. Um... <clears throat> A new project from uh, Quantic Dream, the makers of uh, Heavy Rain and recently Beyond Two Souls. Uh, it's called The Dark Sorcerer. I don't know if that's actually 
a game or anything, but <laughs> the trailer looked pretty good. Uh, they showed off a bunch of new indie games. Uh, too many t for me to remember right now. They're re-releasing Diablo 3 uh, for the PlayStation 4. <clears throat> and two of the biggest news of the night. Final Fantasy vs. 13 has become Final Fantasy 15, and it features amazing looking gameplay. It looks like Kingdom Hearts style gameplay. And the setting looks cool. Like future meets Final Fantasy. Oh my god, it looks great. Hopefully it can redeem Final Fantasy after the travesty that was 14. And speaking of Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 3 has finally been announced. I have to suppress my inner fanboy for this because... I love Kingdom Hearts. I do. I love the series. But I've been wanting a mainline game for a while now. And you guys finally announce it. Thank God. I can't wait to see how the story goes. It's probably going to be the conclusion to the Kingdom Hearts saga. I don't know. But for the mo for what it's how it stands right now, I'm freaking excited. Uh, there was the Elder Scrolls Online, cool. Uh, Santa Monica's new game, The Order 1886. Santa Monica is the creator of uh, God, the God of War series. And this game looks pretty cool. Kind of like a steampunk-esque uh, shooter or something. We're going to have to see how that one plays out. Mad Max the video game. Interesting. Anyways, they showed off more Destiny gameplay, after which I am completely sold on that game. I want it. I want to play it. It looks like Borderlands meets Halo, and it just looks so cool. <sighs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for the biggest news of the night, on the first night. Actually, before we get to that, I want to touch on Nintendo's conference yesterday. They kept it safe. They showed off a couple of new games for the Wii U, uh, Super Mario 3D World. Which includes new catsuit Mario that can climb and climb walls and claw at things. That looks cool. Four player co op with uh, Princess Peach, uh, Luigi, Toad. Maybe more characters to come, I don't know. Uh, new, new Mario Kart, that's always fun. Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 3DS with Mega Man! Yes! They have Mega Man! The original Mega Man as a playable character. I cannot be more excited for that. You guys have no idea. Uh, let's see. More highlights, you know, they're releasing Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut, which they're touting as better than the than the original. The original was already good to begin with, and if it gets better, with its reinvented boss fights, updated graphics, <clears throat> and smarter AI, oh yeah, that, that's going to be a great game. But I'm holding off, guys. I'm holding back. <laughs> I was going to say something about the Sony thing, and I'm going to say it now. Sony, 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 Sony. Laid the fuck smack on Microsoft. You know how? You know how Microsoft has always online DRM? You are restricted on how you can implement used games, or actually use used games. Sony has announced that you can play used games all you want. You can trade in your games, keep them forever, sell them to a friend. No restrictions. No bullshit. Oh, they can only play it once, but only if you've had your friend on your friends list for 30 days. No activation fee for anything after that. No limitations to 10 friends or fa 10 family members. No. Just buy a used game. Sell it. Trade it. Keep it. Doesn't matter. And also, get this. Absolutely no always online requirement. They, they don't need you to check in every 24 hours or every hour if you're at a friend's house using their Xbox One. You don't need to stay connected to access all the offline features.
You epic bastards. You left Microsoft crying on the floor. And seeing Microsoft trying to pick themselves up after that is hilarious. And just watch some videos of the post E3 conference. You'll see what I'm talking about. But oh my god. Sony destroyed the Xbox One right there. They also released uh, the fact that PlayStation Plus will carry over. And probably your PlayStation Network account. Your trophies will be laid over. Mike. My- in order to play online, though, here's the thing. They're going to do the same thing that uh, Xbox Live does at about less than 5 bucks a month, which equates to, they said, about $50 a year, same as uh, Xbox Live. You get PlayStation Plus, and you get to have access to multiplayer. That's kind of a negative, but nobody complains about it with the Xbox Live, so I don't see why people would complain about it now. And also... PlayStation Plus has so many new features. Uh, Free games every month, early access to betas, uh, discounted prices. um, What is it? Oh, man, so many good features for the PlayStation Plus that I'm trying to remember, but those are the ones that come to my mind. Just the early access, the exclusive content, the, the... Multiple online multiplayer thing, the uh, free game every month that is awesome. <sighs> Sony, you get an A plus from me for the conference. Microsoft, a B because you guys had some good games. You had a good setup going with micros with the uh, announcements, but you still disappoint with your console. Oh, and they did reveal the PlayStation Four at E3. I like the design. Looks like a parallelogram or an eraser, but then again, it's just trying to erase the Xbox One from history, but that's another story. (laughs) Okay, Microsoft, you get a B. Good production value, you just suck with your console. EA, you get a C. A C minus, because trailers and tech demos should not just cut it. Ubisoft, B plus. You just said business as usual, and that's usually a good thing. Sony, A. Nintendo, B+. You know, you're keeping it simple. You didn't get up on the big stage. But, hey, you know, I'm not complaining. So, yeah, that's my recap of E3. The Xbox One is the biggest cock tease in terms of its games. EA was being a bigger tease. Ubisoft, business as usual. Sony laying the fuck smack on on Microsoft and putting them in their place. Taking their top spot on the console war so far. Nintendo, keeping it simple, keeping it friendly, keeping it fun like they always do. And that's all the time I have for you today, guys. Uh, so, until next time, and until the, rele- until the release of The Last of Us, which I will be doing a review of, this has been Master Metal 777, a.k.a. Joel Castro, signing off. Have a good day, guys, and I will see you next time.